Hello and welcome to my summer evening skincare routine. Let's get unready with me. A basic evening skincare routine really includes only three steps, double cleanse, a treatment, and moisturizer. Of course, you can add to this routine as many treatment steps as you'd like. I've really pared down my evening routine. I've moved all of my devices to the morning when I have a little bit more time and a little bit more energy. I like my evening routine to be super simple these days. I always start with a double cleanse. I actually haven't always done a double cleanse, but I have found that it's so beneficial to do an oil or a balm first and then come in with either a creamy cleanser or a jelly cleanser second. I wasn't really getting all the makeup and the sunscreen off with just a single cleanse, so I highly recommend if you're not doing a double cleanse that you start. The first cleanse for me is usually an oil or a balm cleanser. You don't need two cleansers. You can use the same cleanser that you have for both the first and the second cleanse. It just helps me get all the eye makeup off, especially when I'm wearing mascara and sunscreen, to start with an oil cleanse, or you can use a balm cleanser. I'm going to list some additional products down below that are in the same categories as the products that I'm using that may be better suited to your skin type, dry, normal, oily. So I'm gonna break that down and all those products and alternates will be listed down below. Right now I'm using the Pixie Oil. This I just happened upon in my local Target and I really enjoy it. It helps melt my mascara off in the evening. It's just a basic oil cleanser. I also love the Hada Labo, also very inexpensive and budget friendly. Right now I'm using the Molecular Skin Amino Hydrating Cleanser by Allies of Skin. This is definitely a luxury cleanser. You certainly don't need a luxury cleanser. This was gifted to me in PR and it is wonderful. It's a jelly type cleanser, but it leaves my skin super hydrated. It's very gentle. Another option is the Ordinary Squalane Cleanser, but I have to admit that I think they might have done something to that formula. I've used that now for two years, and right now it is stinging around my eye area. I have had terrible allergies, so that could be adding to the issue. So it's been really nice to be able to switch to a more gentle cleanser. Another option for all skin types is the Aveeno Calm and Restore, also great for your second cleanse. If you have oily skin, you might wanna opt for a cleanser with salicylic acid or glycolic acid. The one that I use very occasionally when I feel some buildup on my skin and I really just wanna get some of that flaky skin off is the Neostrata's glycolic cleanser. Another great one is CeraVe Essay Cleanser. Both are gentle. For my very dry, sensitive skin, I can only use those on occasion. They're not regularly in my evening skincare routine. Next up is your treatment step. For me, it's moisture and anti-aging. So I'm doing two steps. I'm buffering my anti-aging vitamin A with a moisturizer that has some actives in it. This is the Kilsom Multi Action Cream. My mom and I are both using it. This has their signature conditioned medium with growth factors and proteins and fatty acids. It's very lightweight. It sinks in really quickly, which is why my mom loves it. They say you can pair it with an additional moisturizer. I haven't been, but I've just been using this as a prep for my retinol. I like to sandwich my retinol. So I do a moisturizer, then my retinol, and sometimes another moisturizer. What I've been using for my neck and decollete is another active moisturizer. This is by Dermalect. It has AHAs, it has BHAs, it also has arginine for firming. I'm all about a neck cream these days, and this actually has active ingredients. The Dermatology neck cream is basically just a lovely hydrating moisturizer for the neck and decollete that I use in the morning. But at night, I move to an active either moisturizer or serum for my neck and decollete area. I've used the Dr. Loretta glycolic pads. Those are pretty high in percentage. And I've also used some prescription level glycolic for the neck and decollete. That's pretty advanced, but this seems to be an extremely gentle formula, even though it does contain a bit of glycolic, salicylic, and l acid. It's been very gentle. I've had no irritation on my neck or decollete from this. 
So I would consider this maybe a mid-range active ingredient for the neck and decollete. If you've never tried anything active on your neck and decollete before, I would go very slow and very low, do a little patch test, see how that area reacts. The skin on our neck and decollete is so thin and often more reactive than the skin on our face. Next is my second treatment step, which includes vitamin A derivatives. I've had to back off my tretinoin to once a week and use a retinaldehyde, which is one step down from tretinoin. Your skin does have to do the conversion to vitamin A. I've been trying the Geek and Gorgeous on your recommendation. It's a really yellow formula, which I was worried about, but if I start early enough in my skincare routine, this dries down and doesn't stain my pillows. It's very affordable. You can also check out the May Love, which is sort of a lighter serum. I would say this is in between the Aven Creamy Retinaldehyde and the May Love. The May Love is probably best for oily skin. This would be better for normal skin, and the Aven is definitely going to be better for dry skin. And both the Geek and Gorgeous and the May Love are super budget-friendly options for a retinaldehyde. And like I said, I'm using my tretinoin in the pea-sized amount once a week. I take a day off from my retinoids because one day I just feel like I need to do a completely moisturizing routine from start to finish. So I'll take one day off during the week and not use a vitamin A. Another option for the eye area, my eyes are not all that sensitive underneath and I can use my retinaldehyde all the way up to my under eye area. But another option are products with retinol, which needs to make multiple conversions to get to vitamin A, but it's also more gentle. And this is the one by Peace Out. It's a retinol stick. If you're sensitive to vitamin A, you want to make sure you avoid the nasolabial folds, which can get irritated the eye area, and sometimes right under the nose. So if you're just starting out using a vitamin A derivative, definitely take it low and take it slow. You can use the sandwich method, or you can use the buffering method, and I'll leave a video link up above. This video is a little bit old, but all the information is still very valid. The sandwich method just means that you put your vitamin A between two layers of moisturizer. The buffering method, which is what I'm using right now, just means you put some moisturizer on before you put it on your vitamin A. And you can also do the wash off method, which means you try a little bit of vitamin A for about 10 or 15 minutes, then you wash it off and move on with the rest of your skincare routine. Of course, you would push that to the beginning of your skincare routine if you're using that method. It's just a nice way to introduce your skin to vitamin A very slowly. I have a girlfriend who could not tolerate it, and that was the wash-off method was something that worked really well for her. Another very interesting product that I'm using for the upper lip area, I've never used a dedicated product for the upper lip, but we do get those barcode lines, anything we can do to soften that area, I'm all about. I'm about two thirds through the Dermalect Smooth Upper Lip Periorbital Anti-Aging Treatment. That is a mouthful. Now, you can just use a regular moisturizer around this area, but this does have some dedicated hydrating ingredients that probably will plump up the nasal label folds and upper lip lines. I haven't noticed a huge difference, but it is slightly plumping. This contains Arbutin Matrixyl 3000, which is a peptide complex, retinol, and GABA to tighten, as well as hyaluronic acid, and it just goes right above the lip area and along the nasal label folds. I'm not sure I've seen a ton of difference with this product. I'm about two thirds through, and I do have a little problem with the applicator. This little roller ball keeps, it's not coming off right now, but it keeps kind of coming off. The dispensing, it kind of comes out really quickly, so be very gentle if you're using this and you're trying to dispense a small amount. It comes out very quickly and you can't lock it, so when I store it, a lot of the product gets into the cap. There are a few packaging problems with this, in my opinion, and it is definitely an extra. The last step in my skincare routine is my lash serum. I use the Revital Lash, and I alternate that with my Bimatopros to keep my lashes growing and conditioned. Both of these products do have prostaglandins, and of course, the Bimatoprost is prescription. In the evening, if I haven't put a ton of 
moisturizer on my lips, I'll pop in a lip moisturizer. This is the Kisu by Tatcha, but in the evening I actually prefer the Laneige. It's a little bit thicker and creamier for evening time. I live in Colorado, it's so dry. I do run a humidifier, but sometimes it's just not enough in the evening. So I always slather my lips up and occasionally I'll use an eye cream in the evening, but typically no. On the weekend sometimes, if I'm doing an eye treatment, I'll get out my forever eye patches and get an eye cream out, but typically on a daily basis, it's just these five steps. Thanks very much for joining me for my evening skincare routine. I always like to hear about the products that you're using, so definitely leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and wishing you a skincastic day.